Well, welcome back to the optional extra video and thank you for joining me on the journey through the history of the Hillman Imp. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to look at a few different very useful sources. The first of them was a website called impsforever.info. They have so much information about everything to do with the Hillman Imp that was, that was fascinating to, to read. There are another couple of videos that I also found useful. One of them you may already be aware of. It's a video called The Cars of Star. Um, a guy called, I think, Quentin Wilson, whatever his name is, Quentin, yeah, Quentin Wilson, did a whole load of videos about different cars in the 1990s. It's probably where the idea for these videos came from. And he looked at various different cars and he did one of them on the Hillman Imp. And that was very interesting itself. There was another BBC documentary in 2006 called Linwood and the Hillman Imp that goes into a lot of detail about the union problems and there's a lot of detail about, about that, which is also worth a watch. One thing I noticed though when watching the Cars the Star video, and I noticed this when also watching another one about the Austin Allegro, is they make so many mistakes in the video. <laughs> And I'm thinking it's the BBC, they've done lots of research and they know what they're doing. But for example, they talk about the Imp's design as being influenced by the Mini. Well, how could they be doing that? Because they started in 1955 and the Mini wasn't launched until 1959. It wasn't even thought about until 1956. So that, I don't think, see, that makes any sense. So anyway, I'll, maybe it's a bit of a wake up call for me to, take everything that the BBC says with a pinch of salt, because generally they're pretty reliable. Anyway, another thing I, I put in the video, and sometimes I, I write stuff in the script and I just stretch it a little bit. I, I take fact A and fact B, and I sort of, from fact A and fact B, think, okay, well, therefore that must have been happened. So fact C must have happened. And sometimes that isn't true. So I thought that the government was trying to get the Roots Company to invest in Linwood because it's a marginal seat and therefore they want to get votes for doing it. But I did a bit of digging and the governments at the time in between 1955 and the early 60s were conservative governments in, across the UK and Linwood was the Paisley district. It's changed to various other districts now, but at the time it was the Paisley district, which was staunchly Labour. So it definitely wasn't the case of them trying to win the seat. There was no way the Conservatives were ever going to win that seat. So it really was a case of the Conservative government trying to make sure that there were more jobs around in different areas, which is a noble goal, which is after all, the idea of a government, right, it's trying to help all the people. So Roots is creating the car that will become the Imp. And then in 1959, BMC launch the Mini. And it's a bombshell for the car industry, but particularly for Roots. And one thing I noticed about that is they decided to essentially double down with the bad choice of a rear engine and a conservative styling that they'd gone through. So they thought, okay, well, we'll just keep going and we'll just try and sell it as fast as possible and then we'll try and fix it later on. It's something called the sunk cost fallacy, which you may or may, or may not have heard of. The idea being that you, you, make it, you made a decision and you keep going with that decision. And even though you found out, find out later that it's a poor decision, you keep going because at the end of the day, it's a decision that you want to stick with because you don't want to lose face or you don't want to lose time. In, the case, in this case, we don't want to lose time to try and get it to market. We can't just start again and restart things. But in the end, you end up with a product that, or a decision that isn't right, it's wrong, and you just compound problem upon problem upon problem. It's better in some cases to just stop and restart, even if it's gonna take longer in this case to get to production, it would have been better to have made better decisions and create a car that actually the, the market really wanted. So another thing that was interesting was the Imp name came from a company called Acer Craig Limited, who were a manufacturer of marine engines. They had an engine called the Imp. 
and they were acquired by another company and all their assets were up for sale, including the names. So Roots Company decided to do a deal to buy the imp name and they, they swapped it for a new Humber Super Snipe motor car, which was an interesting trade. I suppose it was cheap and easy for them and you know the other company got a free car. So in the early 60s where Roots is very excited about the Hillman Imp and it's going to be the next great new car, they're also looking at other variants and another one was the Roots Asp, which is this sort of sports car-like thing. It would have been produced by Jensen Motors, which may not have made sense because Jensen were down in West Bromwich, which is very close to Coventry, which would have meant even more money ferrying parts up and down from Scotland and backwards and forwards. So I'm not sure that would have worked. It would have used a larger 998cc engine. They would have checked to find out the weight of it and if it was too heavy, they would have swapped the, the steel body for a glass fiber body. But in the end, the thing that killed it more was the US reaction to it was lukewarm. They weren't really excited by it, which is surprising because you had MGBs and Triumphs and things like that that were being sold in the US. So in the end, it was dropped because not only wasn't the great reaction from the US, which is going to be the, the, the main market for it, but also there was no more money to invest in it because Roots were having so many problems with the Linwood factory and got poor demand for the, the Hillman Imp. And so there are all kinds of problems with the Linwood factory. It started up in 63 and it closes in 76. I'm not sure whether they decided to close it in 75 or 76, but certainly the decision in 75 for the government to give Chrysler more money certainly left it open until 1976. And then it closed down for a while while they retooled it for the Chrysler Sunbeam and production actually started for the Chrysler Sunbeam in 1977. So there was presumably some sort of period where they were swapping things over, but they kept the workers employed so that they could come back. But in the end, the Chrysler Sunbeam didn't do well either. It was just a stopgap. And at the end of the day, Chrysler were kind of done with Linwood and all the union problems and trouble and the fact that it was so far away just didn't work. So production ended at the Linwood factory in 1981. So that's what, 18 years? Entire time the, 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 the factory was open. So you know, they were keen to get shot of it. The workers didn't make it easy for them to well, rather did make it easy for them to make the decision by being so difficult to deal with and um, always complaining and causing problems. If you compare this to the Nissan plant in Sunderland where they make the Nissan Qashqai that I talked about recently, the workers there, they work hard, diligently, very harmonious relationships, and they do everything in their power to keep their jobs there's been times when there's been decisions about, well, should Nissan keep the Sunderland factory open? And every single time they've decided to keep it open, even though the workers there are obviously are paid quite a lot of money because it's um, the, the workers are paid UK salaries if you compare it to Poland or Romania or, or other places where they make cars with uh, lower wages, obviously they're being paid more. So it's very it's 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 important for the Sunderland workers to do everything they can to keep their jobs. So I thought it's interesting to compare the Nissan Sunderland situation with the Linwood situation. It, it it's not just Linwood. I'm sort of picking on Linwood here, but if you look at almost every car company and every car factory in the 60s and 70s with all the union problems that they had, they were making they weren't making it easy. For the, for, for the car companies, first of all, to make cars, and then secondly, to, to want to keep them open. So after editing this whole optional extra video, I wasn't happy with how I left it. So I thought I would add a bit more, especially after thinking about it a bit more. So the thing is, is that in the 1960s, the 1963, when, when the Hillman Imp came out, was a very different economic time. So it was a boon time for the economy, the 50s and 60s, it was full employment. Um, and certainly there was a feeling from workers that they should share in the profits from the good times that were being had. So there was a lot of union action to say, well, we, we want to share of this. And 
a lot of the workers who were working at that time were relatively young and couldn't remember things like the depression of the 1920s and the terrible times in the 1930s with the Jaro marches and there was obviously a lot of high unemployment at that, at that time and they just felt the good times would never end. But having said that, the reason why they built the factory up there was because shipbuilding was ending just down the road, the shipbuilding industry was having problems, they, built, they were building ships over in the Far East, they were starting to build motorcycles over in the Far East and the motorcycle industry in England was starting to have problems. But on the other hand, you had unions in the factory, and this isn't just Lindwood, this is across the country, that unions were pressuring workers to strike, and it was a big public vote, and if you didn't vote for strike, you were maybe felt, some people maybe felt you were weak, so there was pressure to vote for a strike. So it was it was a difficult time. So I, 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 it's a nuanced issue and that's, really, that's, that's what I'm trying to point out. It's not the fact that the people in Linwood were lazy or the people in Sunderland aren't lazy. It, it, there's more to it than this. And this also wasn't just a, like a, a conservative government versus a union issue. Uh, that video I pointed out earlier on points out that the unions humbled the Labour Party in the late 1960s. So the Labour Party weren't even helping the unions as much as they wanted. So there was really big, strong union pressure. So anyway, that's all I have for the Hillman Imp video. Thank you for watching and thank you for getting to the end of all of this stuff. I, I appreciate it and um, I'll see you in the next video.